my screen. There we go. Okay, so um, how are we going to solve that first one? X squared plus 25. Subtract 25. There you go. So we're going to get rid of that. Let's get, let's get some space here. Move this one over here. So we're going to do minus 25 on both sides. And then I end up with x squared is equal to a negative 25, so I run into a problem. If I'm going to take the square root of both sides, what's going to be the square root of a negative 25? So I'm going to break that to 25 and the negative 1, right? What was the square root of negative 1? So it's going to be 5i, right? x is equal to 5i. Remember, we can't have a negative under the radical, so they came up with those imaginary numbers that we can use so that we can deal when it shows up. Okay. Let's move this guy over here, and we'll talk about first, outside, inside, last, foil, ooh, stole the six. First, three times four. And 3 times a negative 3i. Negative 3i. Um, that does look like a 5. Oh. It's a three. But that's fine. We can leave it as a 5 and we'll make it 15i. Because it does look like a 5. Mm -hmm. Talking about my hand right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two time, 2i times 4. And 2i times that negative 3i. Five, five, five. <laughs> so that's going to be a negative 10i squared. Now, remember we put a star in our notes last uh, Monday about that i squared. So the negative 10, and what's the i squared? A negative one. So that makes this a plus 10, right? So I can put that together with my 12, and I'm going to have 22. And a negative 15i and a positive 8i, that's going to give me a negative 7i, right? Got to be watchful on that i squared. And I promise it will come up on your test. Right? Don't be difficult. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right, what about how do I simplify when I have these? Mm -hmm. We're going to multiply by the... No. Oh, no, it's the uh, Started with the C. <laughs> <laughs> conjugate, conjugate, right? <laughs> and what is the conjugate of 4 minus 5i? There you go. Got to change that sign. So every time you have to change it, right? Mm -hmm. okay. You're going to leave the 4 alone. You're going to leave the 5i alone. Just the symbol. Just the symbol. Oh, okay. Whatever it is, the opposite. If it's negative, you're going to make a positive. If it's a positive, you're going to make a negative. So we're going to do 4 plus 5i. And remember, if you're dealing with a rational expression, whatever you do to the denominator. Okay, so i got to distribute that 6. So that's going to give me 24 plus 30i. And now i got to foil out that bottom, right? First, 
outside, inside, last. Mm, what no, else? I'll put 20 there you go. And this one is going to be a negative, right? And then here we go again. Minus 25i squared. Okay. So those two center terms. Here's the whole reason why we wanted this positive and not negative. I get there, but once I get to the... Right there, I've had to be crossing two out. I'm still. Um, so after that, you want to do the negative 25 i squared? Yep, negative 25 times. Negative one. one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that becomes plus 25, right? So I've got 24. Oh, come on, don't be difficult. You're going to be difficult, aren't you? I have 24 plus 30i over 16 plus 25. And that 16 plus 25 is going to give me And that is simplified. Don't um, don't stop at this point. When you have three numbers, I always take that final check. Mm -hmm. Could I reduce this by any other number, right? But I'm looking at 41, and 41 is a prime number, so that's not going to be anymore and i know that doesn't look like something simplified it looks like something bigger right yeah. i mean this six put over the format it seems smaller seems more simplified than this does but this has a, an i in the denominator which is not allowed and this doesn't so that was my goal okay so let's go to how about what was that quadratic equation? We're going to use that guy to solve this. Negative. Mm -hmm. Add up to five. Plus or minus. Mm -hmm. Square root of negative B. Mm -hmm. B. Squared. Plus or minus. Minus. One. AC. All the over two two a. A. There you go. Good job. Okay. Right? Oh my gosh. I don't even want to know how many times I have recited. <laughs> I don't even bother. Ugh. If I ever get to the point where I can't write that down, I better hang it up because something has disconnected. Okay, so A in this problem, A is one. What's B? And C is 10. So I've got a negative, negative 6, plus or minus 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 10, 2 times... One. All right, my negative 6 squared, that's going to give me a 36. Minus 40. So at this point, I have 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 over 2. Square root of negative 4. What was our square root of negative 25 when we're in our first problem? It was going to be a 5i, right? Yeah. So what's going to be the square root of negative 4? 2i? 
because I'm going to break that negative 4 to the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1, right? Okay. Square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So I'm going to have 6 plus or minus 2i over 2. Can I still do some simplifying there? Yeah. You know, 2 is going to come out of all of them, right? Mm -hmm. So 6 by 2 is going to give me a 3. And do I need to write that 1 under there? No. So we're just going to leave it as... We're going to have to write the one just leave it like that. Yep. You could put the one there. But it if, will be right somewhere mm -hmm. under there. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. So that was our little review on 1, 3. We need to talk about 1, 5. And 1, 5 is inequalities with the less than or greater than. And the only thing we're going to add on to it is our interval notation. Okay. Do you remember when you had to graph? Like when you graphed um, X is less than 5. So you had your 0 and your 5. And you probably put like an open circle. I <laughs> Well, we got to change it, so that's good, all right? We're not going to graph. I'm not going to have you graphing on here, but you're just going to mark over whatever your answer is. Um, <clears throat> but the open and closed circle, that's gone. What we're going to have, instead of an open circle, whenever I just have the less than sign or the greater than sign, Instead of an open circle, I'm going to be using parentheses, okay? If I have the or equal to, that or equal to in with it, then instead of parentheses, I'm going to be using the square brackets. So let's say that I have the inequality, we'll say I have 2x minus 5 is greater than um, 3. So in inequality, we're going to solve it the same exact way we would any equation, right? So we're going to start out with adding 5 to both sides. Now I've got the fives are canceled, and I have 2 times x is greater than, and I'm going to divide by that 2, x is greater than 4. So how am I going to write this in interval notation? My answer doesn't actually include 4, right? Because I can't. that would be a false statement. If I said 4 is greater than 4, that would be a lie. So I can't include 4. So I want to use my parentheses, and I'm going to start with 4, comma. Now, it's greater than 4. So it's 6? Infinity. infinity. It's going to go all the way to infinity. And my infinity symbol, that's that sideways 8. Right? Now, can I reach infinity? No. So I'm going to close it with another parentheses. Now in your textbook, you have a chart that shows you all of your different ways of graphing what that's going to look like. <clears throat> um, let's solve 3x minus 7 is greater than 2. Mm hmm Exactly. Mm hmm Good. 
Yes. All right. So I'm going to have, if I have to put this on a number line and graph it, there's going to be a zero and there's going to be a three, right? X is greater than three. So that means it's got to be going in that greater than direction. So my arrow that I'm going to draw is there, but I'm not going to use that closed circle. I'm going to use that parentheses. Now, how will you be answering them for me most of the time? We're going to start with three comma infinity interval notation. These two things say the same exact answer. Thank goodness. That's all I can do is the interval notation. Yeah. <laughs> when I get to the graphs, I can't remember the parentheses or which ones. And well, now the parentheses or the square brackets is less than or, or mm -hmm. equal to. All right, what about, what about, there is one difference in solving equations and inequalities. If I subtract this two from both sides, then that's gone and I got negative three X is less than or equal to, what do I got to divide by this time? Negative. A negative. And what do I do if I ever divide an inequality with a negative? Mm -mm. If I That's multiply or divide, oh, you flip it. That's right. By a negative, I have to flip my symbol. So now because I'm dividing by that negative three, instead of a less than or equal to, I've got to make it greater than or equal to negative one. Okay. Anytime, whatever number I put down here is negative, this symbol has to be flipped over. Okay. All right. And this time I have my or equal to. So I'm not going to use the parentheses. I'm going to use the square brackets. Because this, this says don't include, so the parentheses do not include. But this says include, so we need the square brackets to say include. Negative 1. And it's greater than, so it's going to infinity. We'll close it there. Is there going to be a time where the infinity is on the left side? Negative infinity. Mm -hmm. Okay. If it's less than. Mm. Yep. Let's try these two. A little bit more difficulty level. <clears throat> Don't forget about your common denominator on the second one there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll try to
Did we start with distributing that negative 3? Make sure that you distribute a negative. So I have 4 minus 3. Negative 3 times 1 gave me a minus 3. Negative 3 times negative x gives me a positive is less than or equal to 3. All right. What do I have for like terms on this one? So now simplifying that, I've got 3x plus 1 is less than or equal to 3. Subtract that 1 from both sides. And 3x is less than or equal to 2. Yes? No. <laughs> okay, where? Distributing? Right, no. When you flip it, the 3x might how did you how you just move the 3x? Yeah, yeah when different. it's addition, because three plus four is seven, and four plus three is still seven. seven. So when it's addition, yeah, okay. you can move them around. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Oh, I'm glad you said. Okay. All right. So how am I going to put that answer? There's my answer. I need it in interval notation. It is less than, so I'm not going to infinity. I got to go to negative infinity. Can I reach negative infinity? So I'm going to use a parentheses, comma. Two thirds, but now I do have that or equal to on this one. So instead of a parentheses on the end, I got to close it with a on the second one. I have x over two, a one, and an x over four. So I'm gonna get rid of those fractions. Who's my, what's going to be my common denominator, my least common denominator? This is where, remember, whenever we have a fraction, I wrap it all up. Two. Mm. No? Oh, the least. Not the... All right, so if I say 4x over 2, 4 times x divided by 2. 4 divided by 2 is going to give me a, okay, greater than or equal to 4 times 1. Mm, wait a minute, wait a minute, we got to reduce it, not multiply it. So 4 by 4 is just going to give me a, okay, so now I'm going to get my x's together, so I'm going to add that 1x. And I end up with 3x is greater than or equal to 4. Divide by that 3 and x is greater than or equal to 4 thirds. So what's my interval notation on that going to look like? Square bracket. This goes right. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to I got to level up. Ready? Mm -hmm. Sometimes. They have the compound inequalities, right? It's kind of like a two in one. This is zero is less than three x plus two over two, and three x plus two over two is less than four, right? It's two separate problems that they just combined into one. All right, but 
I have a fraction here. So I'm going to do the same thing that I've done on all of them. Wrap it all up and multiply through by that common denominator. So 2 times 0, that's a 0, is less than this 2 out here. When I come to that center term, this 2 and this 2 are going to do what? So that leaves me with 3x plus 2. And I got to go all the way over. Now, if I were just looking at one side of that, like if I just was right here, what would be your next step? Two. Subtract 2. That's going to be still the same next step. But I got to do it to cancel the 2 under the 8 and. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. <clears throat> so I got a negative 2 is less than 3x. Mm hmm. Perfect. All right. Again. If it was just like that, divide by 3. So I'm going to divide by 3. Now this one, when it comes to my interval notation, I have a beginning and an end. I don't have an infinity on this one. Because how low is my answer going to go? Two-thirds. How high is my answer going to go? Two. That's six over three, right? So there's my answer. I'm going to do the same thing, except for I'm not going to have parentheses. I mean, I'm not going to have infinity. I don't have the or equal to on here. So I'm going to do parentheses, two-thirds, comma, two, parentheses. You said there was one more number. Hmm? I like that one more than I like the other ones. <laughs> okay. These are easier because they got a beginning and end? Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Well, you guys try the next one. Watch my big mouth. This one's going to be one. <laughs> No. <coughs> I'm going to distribute that 4. So that's going to give me a negative 12. This 4 and this 4 are going to cancel each other out. So that's less than. And less than. Okay, add the 1. And negative 11 is less than 2x, which is less than 1. 
dividing by that 2. x, 1 half, giving me neither one of my symbols have the or equal to, so both of them are going to be parentheses. There can be sometimes this one will have one and one of them will have the or equal to, so one side's going to be a square bracket and the other's going to be parentheses. Just going to depend on the problem. Yes? Mm -hmm. How do we do? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's see. What do we got? One more of these. What is my least common denominator? Um, well, now you can use a common denominator. You don't have to make it the least. That didn't click in my head. Those were all fractions until right now. I just used oh. three because it was... Would have been using that number one. Well, you could use three, but you're not going to get rid of all your fractions that way. Six, mm, not with four. Go up one more level. Twelve. Huh? So 12 times one half gives me six. All right, now here's where this one gets tricky. Before, these two numbers canceled each other out, but that won't, 12 won't cancel out a 3, or 3 won't cancel out 12. But what does 12 over 3 reduce down to? What is 12 divided by 3? So that comes up as x 4 times x plus 1. Oh, okay. All right, and 12 times 3 gives me a 36 divided by that 4. Okay, then we're going to distribute that 4. So now 4x plus 4 is less than 9, and we are ready to start solving. Have a few extra steps to get ready to solve. But I am at that 2 step. So I'm going to subtract that 4. All three spaces, 2 is less than or equal to... 4x, which is less than 5. Two over four reduces to it's less than or equal to x, which is less than five fourths. All right, I got to start this with a square bracket because on this end I have that or equal to one half 
comma, five-fourths, least to greatest. So five-fourths is just less than, so I'm going to have that as a parenthesis on that side. Mm -hmm. And that is your 1.5 on inequalities. I gave you a study guide. It's a hard copy of the study guide, and that's all we're going to do for the rest of the evening is just... Now, this study guide was written with the intention that we were going to get through 1.7, and we didn't, right? And I told you I wasn't going to change test dates. I will change content, but I'm not going to change content test date. So even though these problems are on your study guide, they're not going to be on the test. Okay. okay? Next test or somewhere down the road, we'll get one seven put in there. Okay. All right. Um, so one through four. Which one do you think would be causing you the most level of difficulty. Four. 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 Okay. Just we just fraction. love those fractions. <laughs> I used to convert all the fractions in math to decimals, and my teachers would hate it. Well. I can deal with decimals more than fractions. No. I'm going to call you out on that one, because you didn't deal with the decimals. Your calculator dealt with yeah, the exactly. decimals. Don't have to deal, don't worry about it. Okay. But... Is just as easy if we can just get rid of them, mm. right? So I have a denominator of a 2 and a 5, so my least common denominator is going to be 2. All right, so <clears throat> my first one, 10x over 2 is going to leave me with 5x. Don't miss any term. Even though there's not a fraction there, I still have to multiply by that 2. So 10x over 5 is going to give me a... Okay. I'm going to get my x's together. I'm going to subtract that 2x from both sides. And I've got 2, uh, not 2. Three. 3x minus 20 equals 80. Mm, perfect. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a thirty-three and a third, or thirty-three point three. Like I said, um, you guys know where your study guide is at in your modules, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you want to look at the answers, the answer key is in there. Okay. okay. Um, and I'm going to try, I'm not making any promises because I never know what, how crazy my weekend's going to get. I might have a grandchild show up or something, something, <laughs> something, you never know. Um, but I will try, I'll send you an email if I, if it looks like it's going to pan out and we'll try to do a meet, an online meet Sunday afternoon. If you want to go over any questions, if you have anything then. Okay. All right, let's look at um, 5. I have x over a plus x over b equals c. I need to get that x alone, so it's a really good opportunity to get rid of the fractions, right? So what is going to be my common denominator? When we did this one, we had a denominator of 2 and a denominator of 5, and our common denominator was 10. So what do you suppose our common denominator is going to be on this one? How did we get that 10? Multiply. So we did 2 times 5, right? 
A times B. Exactly. Perfect. So I'm going to write A, B. So when I do my first term, I'm going to have A, B, X over A. How does that simplify? There you go. Those A's gone leaves me with BX. My second term, I've got ABX over B. Mm -hmm. Equals mm -hmm. All right, when I have a term that shows up in both, we call it the common Mm -hmm. These aren't denominators. Oh. We're multiplying factor. Oh. That's my common. X has become my common. <laughs> I was thinking too hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, over. That X has become my common factor. So I'm going to factor it out. Oh, yeah, okay. Right? I'm going to divide both of them by the X. It's my distributive property backwards. So I'm going to pull out the X. And left inside of the parentheses, I have an A plus B. And there again, because it was an addition, I just flipped it over in um, alphabetical order. Okay, there's nothing different between B plus A or A plus B. All right, I got one last step to get that X alone. Gone. And there is my answer there. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to drop to seven we have a now it's it's um y'all's choice tonight i'm if you want to do a different problem just say mm -hmm. we can do them both it don't matter all right, surface area is equal to 2 pi radius height plus 2 pi radius squared. And we want to solve for, so I want this guy alone, right? So honestly, I know it doesn't look like it, but this is a two-step equation. This is... 2x plus 3 equals 6. I have this x I want to get alone in this term, right? So I have this h I want to get alone in this term. That means this 3 needs to go. This whole term needs to go. It's my constant. There's no h in it at all. So I'm going to start with subtracting 2 pi radius squared. And I have surface area is minus the 2 pi radius squared equals 2 pi radius. Now I want this h alone. And it's being multiplied by 2 pi radius. I'm going to divide by 2 pi radius. I'm going to write that over here. It's canceled. And there is my answer. Can I go back over anywhere on it? Um, mm. 
we are going to go through all of those. I hate to use the quadratic formula on number nine. What could I pull out of, hello, what could I pull out of 12x squared and 26x? What could I pull out, what could I divide out of 12 and 26? They're both even. Two. Two. And then there's an X in both of them, right? So I'm going to pull out a 2X. When I say pull out, I'm factoring out. That means I'm dividing out. Right? So 12X squared divided by 2X. What does that leave me with? 6X. And 26 divided by 2X. equals zero. So now here's where I've got my last step. I have to say if A times B equals zero, somebody's got to be a zero, right? A's got to be a zero or B's got to be a, somebody's got to be zero. Otherwise, I can't get this out here. So my last step, 2x equals 0, or 6x plus 13 equals 0. x equals 0. Solving my two-step. If we were going to distribute it back, mm -hmm. but we're so we're trying to break that x down and get it all by itself. Is that one of those things I just kind of know I'm supposed to do that? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's part of factoring, and there are my answers, and that is where we're going to cross the x-axis at zero and add a negative 13 over 6. When I go to graphing these, and we're going to have to graph these, I know those are my two points on the x-axis. Okay? Now, again, don't get me wrong. Negative b plus or minus Sometimes it's so much easier to factor the equation than it is to use the formula. But factoring won't work every time. That formula will work every time. If I give you a problem and it's got an x squared in it, your formula will solve for x every single time. So sometimes it's better just to have one solid way to solve than to have three other ways, right? Just focus in on one solid way. So if I have 5x squared, I'm looking at your problem 11. And again, guys, I am pulling problems. If you want to do a different one, no problem. So what is A? and B, and C. So I've got a negative 18 plus or minus 18 squared minus 4 times 5, negative 8, mm -hmm. over 2 times all right, let's let our calculator take over and get us to the next step.
negative 18 plus or minus, we've got 324 minus a negative 160. So that means that we have the square root of 484 over 10. Wait, why is it 484? Oh, minus negative. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't think about it. So I've got a negative 18 plus or minus 22 over 10. Everybody it has to be all three. Can't do it if it's not all three. Is divisible by two. Now, negative nine plus 11 over five. Negative nine minus 11 over five. So I get an answer of two fifths or negative four. Yes? Okay. All right. Um, before I move on to any of the next ones, is there anything on that front page that you want to see? Let's complete any square again, like number 14. Okay, so that is a factoring method. So if you have um, x squared minus 10x, I'm going to get rid of that 24. It's going to be a negative over here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to take B, and I'm going to divide it by 2, and I'm going to square it. That's going to give me 25. So I'm going to take and add that 25 to both sides. Now, what can I multiply? That will give me a 25. If I multiply it, I get 25. If I add it, I get negative 10. What two numbers? Negative 5 and negative 5. Negative 5 and negative 5. So this factors to x minus, whoop, x minus 5 times x minus 5. So I rewrite that as x minus 5 squared. Negative 24 plus 25 gives me, now I solve with my square root method. Square root on both sides. x minus 5 is equal to plus or minus so x equals 5 plus 1 or 5 minus 1, 6 or 4, right? And it's a, it's a way of solving it if you can, but I would never do this unless a is 1 and b is even. And again, this, I can plug the 10x... If I plug in x squared minus 10x plus 24 equals 0 into a calculator, I mean into the um, formula, I'm going to get the same answers. I'm going to stick with that. Okay. Um, what about um, 17? Mm -hmm. 
when we're adding and subtracting, we're just going to treat i like it's any other variable. And we're going to gather our like. Since it's positive in both of them, I'm just going to drop those parentheses. The 7 and 2 come together. And the negative 8i and the positive 2i make a, whoop. Watch your signs, guys, because when you're doing it, this in a multiple choice, 9 minus 6i will be on there. Guess what else will be on there? Mm -hmm. Always be careful. Check your signs. Okay. Um, all right, where else? What would you like to see? Okay. That's where we need that conjugate, right? So I have 2 minus 5i. And the i I need to get rid of is down here in the 5 plus 2i. So what's the conjugate I want to use? Five minus two. Mm -hmm. I'm going to foil. <clears throat> so two times five is ten. I, here's that I squared. Okay. Um, so that I squared gives this, changes this 10 times I squared to 10 times negative 1. So that's a negative 10, yes? So that's going to make this and this cancel each other out. And all I'm going to have left is a negative and 25. Yes? No? Why is negative 10 out of one somewhere? This one? Yeah. So this is 10 times negative 1, right? Oh, uh, okay. So that makes that a negative 10? Well, no, no, no. I'm saying, like, how did you get that? I was, my, I messed up when I was spoiling. Oh, okay. Yeah. A negative 5 times a negative 2i mm -hmm. gave me a positive 10i squared. Yeah. Okay. All right. First, 5 times 5. 5 times negative 2i. No, 10, I just one. Positive 2i times positive 5. Negative 4. All right, here's the whole reason right there. What happens there? They're gone. And then negative 4 times negative 1 becomes plus 4, right? Gives me, oh, and I can even reduce that to another one. That's going to leave me with just negative mm -hmm, i. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Anywhere else? Any qualities from tonight? Yeah. <laughs>
<clears throat> common denominator that I'm going to cancel everybody out with is 2 times 0. And this 2 and this 2 are going to 2x plus 1. And there you go. Subtract that 1. Less than 2x. Dividing by that 2. My answers are going to be negative 1 half and 5 halves. I've got an or equal to on this one, so that's a square bracket. This is just a less than, so that's a parenthesis. Good. With the mm -hmm. We'll try to meet up on Sunday. Um, if nothing else, I will go through and work all these problems in a video and, and have that posted in classroom. And like I said, you do have the um, key yeah. to it in modules. And don't forget... Uh, com. They're a great site. You will not have to pay to see the steps. Um, one of the, I, I use a lot of the YouTube videos, post them. Um, Fort Bend Tutoring is a guy on YouTube that does math lessons and he is excellent at explaining things. Um, so like if I went to YouTube, I'd put in Fort Bend tutoring and then I'd put in inequalities. I can't think of his name right now, but he does a really good job of explaining how to work problems. Okay.